like a Vuce Reviews logo? If you do, then you might want to buy a t-shirt with the channel's logo. Just head to geekygoodies.com slash Reviews and grab a t-shirt for yourself or your friends. By buying Vuce Reviews t-shirts, you are supporting the channel, and I'm thankful for that. And don't forget that you can also support the channel through Patreon. Just head to patreon.com slash Reviews and choose the reward level that suits you best. Your support means a lot. With enough support, this channel will continue providing you with the content and you will be able to contribute to that as well. Thank you to everyone who watches and supports the channel. Hi there, folks. Hi! So, it's me, Lia. It's Kyle. We are in the hotel right now. We are visiting Gen Con. We are. In Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. we, we came yesterday, on Wednesday. And the first day is the first... First day is the first day of Gen Con. Yes, it is. Oh, that's, that's hard to say. August 2nd, 2018. August 2nd, 2018. And it's, it's pretty crowded um, <laughs> on the first day, to be honest. I'm, I'm here for the second time. Uh, for me, right now, it's more like a vacation because I'm, I'm more like a tourist, just roaming around, playing games, looking at games, buying games. I'm not doing any of those things. I'm not, I'm not playing, I'm not buying, sure. and I'm not looking at... I'm just walking the halls. That's the biggest American lie you can you can hear from Kyle. It's not just an American lie. That's just a full-out lie. Well, a full-out lie. It doesn't need a qualifier. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so um, we're going to talk about what happened so far. So we got in, uh, and we, we roamed around, and I saw a few people. I saw a few familiar faces, the Dice Tower folks, and then I saw Bruno. I saw Lance from TMG. Uh, so many folks, Nathan from uh, Gaming Games, uh, people from Osprey Games, who are, the sponsors, who are the sponsors of the channel. <laughs> so, yeah, I should mention that. Anyway, uh, yeah, lots of great people. I want to see more people. and I saw, Oh, Daryl Andreas as well. So, yeah, a lot of people. So, how was the first day? What, 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 what did you see? What did we get by, whatever? Well, I mean, my first mission, you know, we did our top ten games for for Gen Con and I the first stop for me was the Plaid Hat Games booth where I needed to get a copy of Guardians and I did yeah and I was the line was kind of long but that took them a while I think to get up and going and once it got going it was okay yeah I got a copy have not played it yet but I certainly will at some point they didn't they only had ooh, I don't know a hundred or so there so that's why that was an important okay. first stop and it's gone now so <laughs> yeah, I went somewhere else where you were. You did. You went a couple of places because it took me a long time. Oh yeah, yeah. I went to TMG and then something else, and then I got lost. Some, but I didn't get lost. But I was, I was talking to some person that was like walking towards the other side, <clears> and then I was like, "All right, I'm, I'm stuck in the crowd." And I then, hadn't taught you about navigating the, the, the exhibit hall yet, so yeah. So, <laughs> now you know. <laughs> yeah, now I know. Um, but anyway, yeah, that was fun. Um, I just. While you were getting Guardians, I uh, was just roaming around and talking to people. That's mm -hmm. what I love usually to do in conventions. I I, I'm, I don't want to like sit down and demo the game because if I want the game, I just buy the game. And I really want to talk to people. I want I want them to pitch me the game, explain me the game maybe, and just you know uh, talk yeah. to talk to people. That, that I love that because I see many familiar faces who know me, who've seen me once a year. So, you know. Yeah, and I'm the opposite. I want to try everything I can. I, I, I'm happy to buy games, but it's nice if I can at least try it and see if it's, you know, going to be something I'm interested in. One of the games we played today, I, you know, it was one I was really looking forward to, but I decided I'll wait a while to buy it just because the nature of the game, although it was excellent, is the kind that just people that I know won't want to play for a while, so I can wait. But it's, it's always nice to play things. I played that Combo Fighter which I really didn't know anything about, but I thought was fantastic, yeah. and so I'll order that one uh, online at some it's, point, it's, probably it's this evening. It's a Kickstarter evening. game right now, you can do the late yeah, pledge. Yeah, I, I, which I will do, because that was a really good game. It was. It didn't look all that great, but yeah. one, I'd heard the name, and we sat down, the designer was there, he taught it to me, and I just had a great time. That oh, was, he's that a was nice a lot of guy. Fun. That was a <laughs> lot of fun. That was a pleasant surprise. Yeah, um, I saw him in Essen, he pitched me the game in Essen. It's, it's a plot maker games or whatever, plot maker should be the company and the Colossal Games. The, the Colossal Games does, does the Kickstarter distribution of the game. Yeah. And Oscar Johansson is the designer, he's the designer of the, um, the, 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 um, the uh, what is the, 
I don't remember. The, um, I don't read the London Bread. Thank you. That's not a Cthulhu game. It's kind of towards that, whatever. There's no Cthulhu it's in it at London all. It's more of a Jack I don't know. the Ripper game. Okay. Who you cares? would understand why I wouldn't think that was a Cthulhu game. Okay. Cthulhu's not in it but at I'll all. But I'll say you programmed the clock and it's a Grey Fox game. So anyway, London Dread. Okay. He's the designer of London Dread. Anyway. So yeah, uh, Combo Fighter. You're just saying words here? Yeah, Combo Fighter was, a, was really good. It's a Street Fighter type game. It works really well. It kind of reminds me of Yomi. It sort of has some of the same yeah. mechanisms as Yomi, but it doesn't feel like a deck of playing cards. And... Each of the decks seems to be unique, and it's fast, and it's very easy, and the system is just smooth and doesn't have any weirdness in it. And I was just very, very impressed. I'm, I'm glad I got to try that one. I might kind of like it, but it's not the game I was Well, but it's exactly it's the kind of game, game I like. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. But then, uh, what else did we... So we sat down, I think I think the next game we sat down at, uh, was it Jung, Jung, Jungle La? Jungle La, yeah. We went over to the uh, t Tasty Minstrel booth, and you asked about Jungle La, and they said, we've got one we can demo, and so we sat down and demoed it. And It's a Hisashi Hayashi game. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting game. I like it. I, you know, it's, it's, you've got cards in a path, and you roll some dice, and you're trying to move along the path and buy the cards for points, and if you get to the end, you get some treasures, which are worth more points. It was fine. It was light. It, uh, you know, the, the lady who was demoing it didn't know all the rules, which was kind of problematic, but, but we had a good time. I enjoyed it. I don't know that it's one I'll rush out and buy, mm -hmm. but it, it was certainly enjoyable. Yeah, I would, I would argue a little bit. She, she knew all the rules, but the rule book um, had some issues. Well, no, there was a couple of I read of the rule book to, up to yeah, that. You did, so. but the, the, she, you know, she had to keep going and over and asking somebody about rules. So. Oh, no, yeah. That'd so be, that's fine. You know, it is what it is. And you can't expect people to be perfect. But uh, it, was, it, was, it was not the best demo I've had. But I did enjoy the game. So yeah. It was fine. I, I, uh, this is my copy here. I got it for a review, so I'm going to do the review at some point. I liked it. It's... Um, <coughs> It's on a lighter side that I'm probably going to play with my colleagues from work. Uh, you roll, just roll dice, get the symbols, these are the resources, just buy cards. Just match the symbols, basically. And mm -hmm. you get some, like, I like the extra that you get those letters. With those letters you can do some something out of, of the league, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's that's what I liked about this one. Everything else, I don't know, it's it's simple, it's nothing outstanding. Yeah, so, it's, it's yeah, fine. It's, a game. it's also in a small box, that's a nice yeah. thing. The one complaint I have about it is that I'm worried that those dice might rub off. The yeah. dice aren't the best dice. They just so look they like are they're, they aren't they're not engraved. They're not engraved. They're just printed, yeah, on, printed a white, on, on a white cube. And I don't know. I mean, so, sometimes those things wear off. I don't if know. you play it a lot. I guess. You'll have to see how much you play it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't like the artwork as well. It looks... It's not amazing. It's, it's, a fi it's an okay game. Yeah. Average. Anyway. So, after that, we were at Team G booth. You sat down to play Trade on the Tigris. I did. I did not because I wanted to roam around. Plus, um, I knew that I'm, I'm going to get a copy anyway and play it at home. Yep. Trade of the Tigris, if, if you look back at our list of, uh, of Gen Con ex uh, excitement, was, I believe, our, both of our number six. Yes. And I, I really liked Trade on the Tigris. It is really not what I thought it was going to be. It is very much a trading game. It is a yeah. game where you have to, you've got a hand of cards and you're just trying to trade and trade and trade. It's a three minute timer or something and then you, you're trying to trade cards to make sets and you can buy points. And on the bottom of each of the cards, there's, there's two different tracks. There's one that's government and that you can go towards democracy or towards a dictatorship. And another one is the worship of two different gods. And if you move farther on one of the tracks, you get access to better cards later mm -hmm. on. And so you're trying not just to trade the goods, but also to trade for the symbols that you want. Yeah. And then to make it more fun, as the game goes by, uh, other cards come in that say, you can lie about this card, and it's worth negative points or something. And so you're, tra you're trading that one to somebody. And it was just really interesting as the game's going hmm. on, all of a sudden, you know, you say, I need, I need silver, I need silver, and no, but nobody has silver. And then all of a sudden, somebody suddenly has silver, and that kind of yeah. clues you in that they might not be telling the truth about their card. It was, it was really interesting. It's a good production. It's, it, it, six is a lot. And you really have to be in the mood for some negotiation and trading. It's not going to be for everyone. And that's why I'm not sure 
everyone will want to play it all the time. But in terms of a trading game, it is one of the better trading games that there is. Yeah, I, I saw you play playing this one, and I uh, looked at this from from the point of view, uh, and uh, are <clears> we, I don't know that I don't really like the trading, the, the the open negotiation usually in games, but this one sounds like a light one, whatever anybody <laughs> has. No, it's <laughs> it's it, it sounds like something interesting to me. So we'll yeah. see how it goes. Um, Definitely one I'm going to buy at some point, but I'll probably order it online and have it delivered yeah. home, just because space is kind of tight when you come to a convention. We, sh we should play it. We should play it during the convention still. But it's three it's, to it's six at players. At least three people, and I think you're going to need four or five. I, six might have been too many, but I, I think you're going to want a higher player count rather yeah. than a lower one, just so that you have somebody to trade with. Yeah. And enough cards in the game to deal yeah, with. Yeah, well, but it looks really good, even though the theme is like how it is. But it's also a mean game. It is not a nice game. If you go onto certain, you know, one of the God tracks or in one of the dictatorship track, the cards are very much in your face, take stuff away from people, give them bad stuff. It's, it's not a nice game if you play it that way. And you can also be a hard negotiator and, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of going to really depend on your group. Yeah. So... Yeah, okay. but it, it I, but it's a positive that that's a positive comment, not a negative one. Okay, so trade on Tigris. Mm -hmm. Then we roamed around more, and we saw a few things, and we bought. Uh, yes. you bought <laughs> a few things. If you look over at the at the bed, which you can't do, but it is covered with games that I bought. I I bought. I got two new fezes. I got a Utilic Kilt. I'm wearing that right now. I got lots of pins for my gamer vest. Yeah. I have so many pins. I got, oh, probably 10 games, I think. If, if 10 we, games. Yeah, I think that's about right. I'm just looking over there and seeing. That's probably you, about 10. You've got some like you that you like. The Archmage, you just like. Looks Arc, good. Archmage, I bought because it looked, I saw it on the table, it looked good. And then the lady said that it was almost sold out, and so I decided to take the plunge. <laughs> and then, you, after you bought the game, you Then went I went over to... and asked the guy how to play it. Yeah. And I said, it, if I hated it, game. I'll give yeah. it to somebody else. Uh, but it, it, looks, it looks like it'll be a good game. It looks like the kind of game I'll enjoy. Uh, it looks complicated, but it looks like it'll be fun. I got Gun Kimono, which is the, uh, the, the re-implementation of Heartland, which is mm -hmm. a game that has been enjoyed by many people. I got Blue Lagoon because the person at the blue-orange booth said it looked good, and it did. I also got uh, Scarabia from Blue yeah, Orange. We're going to talk about okay, Scarabia yeah. in a moment, anyway. I got one of the expansions for Too Many Bones. I got uh, I got the uh, Kerplunk game, Tower of Madness. Yeah. That was You didn't remember it was on my list, and I was trying to buy it, and you kept trying to take it away from me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, this, is, this isn't an impulse buy. No, this is don't. one that I want. <laughs> yeah. Through that. Anyway, yeah. So, uh, the next game we sat down to play was Scarabia. Ah, yes! It was Scarabia. And by we sat down to play, of course, you mean that I sat down to play and you didn't want to. So, when I, we, but, we talk about the, um, uh, the games on our list for most anticipated games of Gen Con, um, I was talking about one of the Bruno Catal's games that comes out, and I said it's Nagaraja. You were thinking about that Scarab game. Yeah, because I, I, I knew that he was coming out with this game. and uh, Nagaracha, sadly, isn't out in Gen Con. Uh, it should have been, but uh, whatever, the delays. And, yeah, but Terry Vare, I, I saw Terry Vare and Bruno Cotal, both, both of them, I saw them. And I talked <coughs> to them, so they told me that if I catch them, because they were a little bit busy today, um, they can pitch me the game, <laughs> Nagaracha, so... I'm going to play it, but Scarabia. Yeah. It's, uh, um, what are, it reminds me the most of the, uh, of the patchwork. So it's basically the, kind of the patchwork, but kind of reverse. Yeah, patchwork, Baron Park, uh, any of those games. Indian Summer, the, the, that type where of you game. have those mm -hmm. uh, small uh, icons the, the, as well yeah, that you the, cover. The tiles and you're putting them down. Here you, here you don't want to cover. You want to cover certain things. So yeah. what you're trying to do is to, there's these scarabs on the board, and everyone has a different colored board, but it's all the same setup. And you've got these rocks in there that also block off spaces. And you're trying to, to fence in as many scarabs in as large a space as possible, but the spaces can't be more than four. Four squares, or else it's too big and you don't score anything. And then you'll score points based on the number of scarabs in that enclosure times the number of spots. Yes. 
and you're trying just sort of to place the tiles in such a way that you can mm. maximize your points by blocking off areas. Yeah, and it's not like there's, an, there's a, like a huge amount of tiles. It's no, a it's small amount. Ten. So basically, you draw a card, ten, and it 12. says you what tile mm. you have to use. And you play the uh, four-player game mm. where just everyone has its own board. Yep. But we played a two-player game uh, after nice. that where yeah, I really like the two-player game yeah. because you have you both ha have to cooperate on the same the board. Same board, and you're not cooperating. I mean, like to, to <laughs> operate. I wanted to say, yeah. I'm sorry, on the same board. Uh, yeah, you block block each other off, or you s <clears throat> sadly and by mistake set up a really good spot for your opponent. <laughs> yes. And uh, that's what I felt in this it, game. It's really short, really fast. I mean, less ten minutes would be a long game. Ten minutes is somebody yeah. is really thinking. I mean, it's probably in the. Five to seven range. Production is okay. Uh, it's it looks, okay. It looks nice. It looks nice. The tiles are kind of a little bit cheap. Thinner, thinner than they could here, be. Everything is cheap to be but honest. Except, okay. the, except the mountain token there. Th those are nice, but yeah, it's, it's maybe a, a, it's probably a lower cost game. It wasn't that expensive. Uh, $30, and, I think. And, well, it's $30 here. It's probably going to be in the 20 range online. And it, it works well. For Europe, it will be more expensive. Trust me. There's also a solo mode, which I played one time while you were off doing something else. And <clears throat> I, uh, I, I, the, the solo mode was okay. You're trying to cover up all the scarabs using all the tiles. And I saw you was, doing that. It was it was boring. It's it's not the best way to play. It's yeah. it, it's uh, two player worked well. Four player works well. I'm assuming three works just the same because it's the same as four. Yeah. But anyway, it's it's a Bruno Cadalas yeah. Ludovic Moublanc. Cute Would light you? works well. It worked well Abyss with a family, Cyclades. small oh, kids. No. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I mean, Cyclades. Abyss and Cyclades, though, are, are th that sort of belie the complexity of this game. This no, no, game I mean, like, uh, the, 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 same, the same people, okay. the, the Cyclades, and not Abyss was from, with Chevalier. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. the same designer, but very much not the same game at all, and not really related. I think it, it just got <laughs> the, it, it got the uh, inspiration from Patchwork, basically. Oh, well, yeah, or any of those games. I mean, that sort of thing of covering stuff has been up for a while. And, you know, Uwe Rosenberg has done so many games using that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. He has another one out here now for, from Stronghold, but I haven't seen mm -hmm. that yet. Don't care about that. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway. <clears okay. throat> um, So, yeah, um, we played Scarabia after the, uh, the, the door clo those closed for, for the yeah, first day of Yeah, in the game hall, yeah. Yeah, but um, just briefly want to mention that um, I also bought a few games, so I... I I bought. I got the Trade on Tigris and Jungle La as review copies. I bought Carol, so I, I didn't know that Carol was coming out, or maybe I skipped something that I, it wasn't it wasn't on my list. But I really, I was really excited about Carol, so I was waiting for it. Maybe that it would come out in Essen, but it was here. I was like, okay, I'm gonna buy it. Just it was a like impulse buy, basically random buy. I never do that. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, and then I bought the Newfound Land, uh, which it was not on my list because I was not really thinking about it. It no. would be in Essen. The, then I bought this, uh, Rise of Fenris, Expansion of Scythe, which was number one on my list. And then I bought the, oh, the, another kind of impulse buy was Com Award. <laughs> that was very much an impulse it's, buy for you. It's, um, it says, it, first of all, it says 18 plus in the box. It's like, can they have mature... Um, it's because it's full of porn. No, yeah, sure. <laughs> no, it's basically it's a horror surviving story game, kinda. So you roam around the hospital, you kinda you are in a coma, you and then you w wake up in that horror setting of hospital. You roam around and you're trying to get the f phenomenon. What, what do we go? Yeah, phenomenon. Phenomenon's mm -hmm. done and so on. It's all about story. It's like a sandbox where you go, what you do, and you compete with each other. So we're gonna maybe play it today. Yeah, we might play it today. So if you learn the rules. So anyway, yeah, <laughs> we'll relearn together. Anyway, so I got I got this. Maybe I got something else. I don't remember. Anyway, so we played. Um, now we, next we played Carol. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. Yep. There's Carol. Carol. It's a two-player game from Carol American. Carol is in short for kerosene. Yes. Not like the corn syrup. <laughs> Anyway, it's uh. it's it's the artwork from Piero and Prospero Hall is the designer. <laughs> it's it's a hurricane game, so I was like, oh, two player game, hurricane games. They, they did Mr. <clears throat> Jack, should be good. When I saw this one, the, the components are great, um, and I I really enjoyed the game. I enjoyed the game much more than you did, probably. I liked the game. 
I so the the sand timers it has very interesting components. It has these really quite nice trucks that are the sand timers, and the sand is sort of the fuel in your truck. I liked that part. I liked that part yeah. a lot. The whole roll the dice and do stuff part was just okay for me. So it's and I might have had too many turns where I got nothing because so like sand I just because there, there's symbols that lock up your dice, and if you get those, there's not really anything you can do. Yeah, and it's so kind of it's kind of the lock the based, yeah. And and I I wasn't a huge fan of that. I did not dislike the game, but it's also not going to be my favorite Hurricane two player game. Yeah, what, what <laughs> I feel about the the uh, the lock uh, of of the dice is that uh, you kind of need to prepare for that. You need to get more fuel, the, the jerry cans, in order to kind of get more dice. Uh, like, or get more of these special tokens with which you can get some extra things, uh, the, the Torek tokens, and so on. So you can kind of mitigate. There's enough to do. And I really, yeah, I really like that sand timer thing where you... The sand timer was nice. Yeah. That was great. You spend your fuel in order to, to like, the, the longer you can roll as much as you want, but the longer, longer you roll, the more fuel you spend. At some point, if the fuel is out, your turn is burned, basically. It's, it's done. So you kind of have to do your stuff before the fuel runs out, then you have to kind of fill it up, and then the opponent rolls the dice. So it kind of has that tension. And it's, it's a simple game, on the other hand, where you basically you get the resources on the dice, you spend them in order to get uh, cards, which will give you some extra benefits or, or parent abilities, which is nice. It's like a set collection, and you, then you go to territory. So you kind of have enough options also to do, and so... It's, um, it's that, that part didn't do it for me, but I liked. I, I so I really liked the sand timer bit. I liked the the the, the time dice rolling. That mm. part was fine. I just wish that there had been a little bit more excitement after that. So the that part was the highlight, and the rest was just okay. Mm. I liked everything. And I liked the simplicity of the set collection there, basically. Also, I'm worried that these dice might also be the kind that rub off. Yeah, might be. They, they sort of have a cheap feel. The dice do. Everything else has a nice. You know, quality to it, but the dice. Who knows? Who knows? We'll the see. dice seem like if you played it a lot, they might. Well, suffer. it's one of the two-player, uh, one of the better two-player games I've played in a while. So I, I, I really, really, really enjoyed it. For after the first play, it's about eight out of ten. So that was my highlight of the day. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so uh, let's go to the next one. And the last yes. game we've played so far today, at least together, is Illusion, and Illusion is by. Wolfgang Warsch, who has done a million games this year, and it is a little card game, and you got you have you've got cards, and they've got four colors on them in weird designs and patterns, and so yeah. you flip over a card that shows which color you're looking at that round, and then you've got to place the cards in order from the card that has the lowest amount of that color, for example, red. You want the card with the least amount of red, and then put them in order to the card that has the most the most red on it, and you're just judging it with your eyes. And they're often yeah. very close. And then you, you, on your turn, you'll play a card to the row, or you'll say the row is invalid, and you'll, so you'll challenge it. If you challenge, you flip them over, and it shows a percentage of how much is on each card. Yeah. And then you'll see if it's correct, if it's in order, then the person who placed the last card gets the arrow, and the arrow is one of the points you need to win. And if you're if you're if you challenge correctly, meaning the row is wrong in some way, then you get the point. Very simple. I don't know that it was great with two. I think it yeah. probably would have been better with three or four. I enjoyed it, but it's certainly not going to. I mean, it's it's okay. It's extremely forgettable. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one pretty. Uh, I mean, I could see myself playing it with my kids at church, for example. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, for, for um, that kind of a non-gamer type people, like completely non-gamer type people, it's like it's like Uno level of game. Well, you know, it, it's more like and timeline. It's it's a concept of timeline. I would say ti it's more like timeline or even old maid or something like that. Okay. Uh, you know, one of those older card games or BS or you know so, something where you're sort of bluffing and challenging. So you're not bluffing here. You legitimately can't tell. Which yeah. card? I mean, so you can find so this card has a lot of red, and this card doesn't have very much. But on those corner cases, it's like, oh, I don't know where I want to put it. It's fine. I enjoyed it. It wasn't very expensive. I had pre-ordered it because I was ordering something else yeah. that I didn't get to pick up today, but hopefully will tomorrow. And uh, again, not not a bad game. If you were going to compare it with the Mind, I think I like it better than the Mind. But okay. 
uh, but again, I you know it's really different games. It's, it's a well, but it's the same designer, I think, um, and same size box. And it's you know it's it's a small, very small profile card game. You could easily take it anywhere if you wanted. Probably there are better card games, but are. it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. So, so anyway, this 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 is it for for today. We're probably gonna play more games today, and um, but we're gonna talk about them maybe in the next video, the Friday video. And what are your expectations for tomorrow? Just briefly. Crowds. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, what, 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 what do you expect to maybe play, get to demo, and well, and we'll see. Uh, next day we're gonna talk about that. We'll, we'll, I need to go to the CMON booth tomorrow. I went today, but they didn't have the things that I wanted. Uh, I want to see some of their games. I'd love to try Gizmos. I'd love to try Newton if it's there. I'd love to try Kick Ass if it's there. I'm going to say that. Um, I, uh, it's okay. Would, would it's love a game. To, it's, a, I, it's a film. I, I, I'd, love, I'd love to try those games if, if we can. I'd like to try, sort of walk around. I'd like to get into a game of that Everdell or at least see how it works. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, I'm super excited. Uh, that, that one looks really good. And Expand City and so on. So it's, yeah. there are some games that are still on my list. There's that. that new Days of Wonder game that looks oh, really good. Oh, yeah. That's, that's R- the, uh, something River, River Trader, River Boat. I don't know. Not River Boat, like the... Something with River. Yeah, something with a river. It looked interesting. It's Yeah, a new Days of Wonder game. So mm-hmm. I'm... I'm I'm really excited about this one, so I definitely want to try it. Um, I'm just wondering, I'm, I'm going to do a lot of photos tomorrow, probably because, yeah, I, I don't feel that big excitement, so I'm, I don't know how much I'm going to roam around. I already got, I think, enough games because I, I cannot take that many home, plus um, I'm over my budget already, so, uh, so that, that's and, too. And tomorrow we also have the Dice Tower live show, we oh, have yeah. the Letters Page show. So we've got a little, little bit more on the schedule. Yeah, that'll be fine. So it will be. anyway, uh, that was a uh, longer side, but who cares? This is the vlog series, and we talked about different games. And if it's too long, turn it off. Yes. <laughs> and if you watch till the end, and who then who are you? Contact he's take off his us. Yeah, you'll be you'll be our new big, biggest fan. Anyway, um, I'm sorry, Kyle, but you are part of the channel for now. Oh, okay. You're gonna be the fan at All the right. same time. <laughs> uh, otherwise, yeah. Thank you for watching. We'll see you another time. Definitely uh, tune in. We're going to do the Friday video, the, the, the Saturday video, and the Sunday video. We're going to do them separately. I'm going to post it separately as well. So, yeah. All right. See you tomorrow. Hashtag K- kind of best. tomorrow. Yeah. T- no. Hashtag Team Brufel. <laughs> team best. Team best. Tomorrow you're, team wearing, best. tomorrow you're wearing the Brufel t-shirt. I, I very likely will. With Namaste. the best. Namaste. Anyway. Thank you so much for watching. See you another time. Goodbye. This channel is sponsored by Osprey Games. Check them out at ospreypublishing.com.